I think a lot of the Asians look for a husband type. <laughs> the, the guy who will bring home the bacon, who will take care of them, who will be their sponsor <laughs> or daddy. <laughs> Could just be pure attraction. <laughs> Somehow I think it's other issues. <laughs> Issues of um, maybe maybe it's true maybe maybe it's the the little young Asian that's wanting a, a you know some kind of a stabilizing force in his life and maybe it's the older white man that um, is looking for youthful beauty. I I have heard of, of people talking about people that I've met. Who, like Caucasians or, or Asians talking about a particular Asian. Oh, he's just looking for a white man about 50 with a lot of money. Um, th that isn't the type of Asian man that I'm looking for because I don't have the money and I'm not 50. The Asian may be getting money. The Asian may be getting a ticket to power just as much as the 20-year-old you know, blonde woman who marries a 90-year-old senator in some cases, I think part of it is like a, almost like a father image kind of thing in some of the relationships. Um, but that could be another reason why. Or maybe it's just that a middle-aged Caucasian guy really appreciates the chance to have this young, sexy Asian guy so attracted to him. And quite often what I got from those people was that the Caucasian felt that he could no longer compete in the Caucasian community nor could he find in the Caucasian community a man who would be subservient to him. And on the Asian side, there was a lot of anxiety. It was a sign of status to have a Caucasian lover or partner. So it was, uh, it didn't matter the age, uh, it mattered that he was white. And there was a point, I actually dated someone who was quite a bit older than myself. And I was wondering if I actually thought of him as a father figure. Most of the older guys I was dating was just because of the maturity. It was not the father figure maturity. It was the only, another kind of maturity I was looking for. Because what I learned in the relationship where I was with this other guy, he was 20 years my senior. And what it was is that there was just this huge generation gap. I just couldn't relate. There was no common ground for us. For me, um, I've always liked to date people around my own age. Uh, it's tough enough when you're dating somebody from a different culture uh, to have commonality that you work with. Uh, and then if you add a decade or more of age difference, I mean, we can't even talk about the same music, let alone like the same TV shows that I grew up with. So for me, actually, it's, I've always found men attractive that are my own age. But it's funny, I have never seen a relationship or know of any relationship between an older Asian man and a younger white man. And I think the reason for that is that there is uh, an unstated power dynamic between white men and Asian men that relates to a kind of a larger part power, racial power dynamic in, in American society. But I'm still very surprised when I see two um, contemporaries involved in an Asian-Caucasian relationship. I mean, you know, maybe it's twinges of jealousy. There's, there's the stereotype of the older, the older white man and the young Asian boy um, that you seem to see a lot of. And I don't, I don't want to be put in that box. Um, Jonathan and I are, are five years apart, um, which is, you know, I think that's fairly normal. Um, and I'm not saying that somebody who's 40 years apart is not normal, but it's hard for me to understand that type of a dynamic in a relationship. Um, so sometimes I'm worried that people might think that about me, you know, that that lecherous old queen with that pretty little boy. <laughs> I don't want someone to say that about me. But they can't because it's, it's not true. I mean, that's not us. I would say that as a whole, Caucasian men are probably, are, more, are definitely more promiscuous than Asian men. Certainly. Promiscuous? Hmm. 
I think everyone is promiscuous, regardless of what race you are. White men is promiscuous. Oh, I, I, have, I have absolutely the opposite um, feeling in saying I think there are a lot of Asians that are promiscuous. Small dicks. My observation is that some Asians have small dicks, some Asians have big dicks, and I've seen everything in between. I would say that on average they are smaller than Caucasians, but boy, you can get surprised sometimes, let me tell you, and I have been. Um, and is that an issue? Uh, if somebody has a problem with the, the size of somebody else's penis, then maybe they need to go see a therapist. Now, now we've gotten into something. Small dicks with, with Asian men. Yeah, maybe, but you know, it's not, I mean, honestly, it's, it's the poor carpenter who blames his tools, you know? All white men or all Caucasians are tops. Not hardly. Um, in fact, most of the uh, most of the Caucasians that I know that prefer Asians are looking for a nice Asian top to fuck them silly, <laughs> and I hear about it quite frequently. That's a horrible stereotype. That's a terrible stereotype, and I've heard that before. And I've seen that portrayed in the media, in the white media. I remember looking at a postcard in the, in, in the card shop in the Casper district, and it was interesting, on the kiosk were many uh, images by the same photographer, all of nude men. And all of the, the nude white men were portrayed frontally, you know. So their big chest and their big dick and their, their muscly arms and, and, you know, great thighs. And, you know, they were out to confront the world, you know. They were there as very active s sexual beings. They were tops. There was one image of the white of a pardon me an, an Asian man in, 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 on the rack. It was his backside. You didn't see his face. You saw his butt. And I realize this is a stereotypical presentation of an Asian man. He's a bottom. He's faceless. He's fuckable. He can be overcome. Caucasians are less attached to their families than Asians. You know, you leave the house at 18, you know, um, no more parental support, you know, once you reach the age of majority. Um, family's probably the most pervasive issue, I think, that I've seen in other friends who are in mixed, mixed race relations, um, where the sense of responsibility that an Asian person might feel to their family is really far different than what a Caucasian might. Some of it has to do with uh, families and expectations. I think, I think the one big difference that I was brought up with is that I was not supposed to be, if I was going to be fully adult, then I was going to be completely independent of my parents. They were not going to help me. They were not going to give me money, I had my own job, my own house, and, and then I would be an adult if I could get away from them. And they kind of emphasized that. Not, they weren't kicking me out, but, you know, uh, you know, I was making sure you had a job and working and um, that kind of thing. And it seems to be that that's not true for Asians that I know, that um, you become an adult with the help of your family. Um, that you're still part of your family even when you're older, um, sort of still sort of retain the roles that you've had before, uh, as you're still that, that your parent's child. Yes, it seems to be a much stronger, um, they're much tighter 
Yeah, um, you take care of everybody. I mean, you, you know, when you get old, you take care of them. When you turn 18, it's not, you're 18, get out or start paying rent. I mean, I would hear that with my I mean, the, with, I with that growing weird. up Jewish, there is a lot of similarities with family. It's the same thing with same Jewish thing. White culture. Ethnic. It's very tight with the family that they take care of each other. Um, but but I think in general, uh, from from yeah. what I've seen, I think with Asian families, it's, they stick closer. They may it's stronger. Like mm -hmm. As far they take care of each other more. Yeah. Interestingly, I think here's where an Asian cultural thing came in. Fred felt very strongly that we should uh, take care of her and be with her. He always said, you know, you only have one mother. You really have to be kind and good to her. And I said, no way. I, I, I've had it with her. You know, I love her dearly. But, you know, there's only so much. Uh, he really invited her into our relationship. And I was trying to put up the barriers. And I, I think that was a real culture issue for us. And actually one that drove a wedge between us. I mean, she became so much a part of things that I f wasn't sure who was my lover, my lover or my mother. Yeah, it was really kind of weak. <laughs> I see a lot of my friends, they have to um, go home and spend time with the family on certain days, you know, for Chinese holidays or whatever. They feel compelled to do it, and I do the same thing. I go home a couple weekends a month just to be with my family. We don't necessarily do anything. I mean, we could just sit and watch TV in the same room, but it, it, it sort of solidifies that bond, and it's sort of is a duty on my part. You know, I owe it to my mother to spend time with her. And I don't know if that just goes for everybody or if that's just because of that I'm half Chinese and I'm, I'm doing it with a Chinese mother. I'm not sure. You know, sometimes um, Caucasians were not, not comic figures, but, you know, it was like um, they just did things differently than we did and it was not, it was not good different. <laughs> um, you know, they... Um, put their parents in old folks' homes and kick their kids out and, you know, eat TV dinners and <laughs> stuff like that, so. There is uh, the family issue. He's very close to his family. Fortunately, his family is very accepting and supportive. In fact, we went to see them uh, last Christmas and had Christmas, it was a family reunion. And honestly, it was, I, I've really never experienced anything like it. Um, being in a family that was so close and obviously cared about each other so much and they welcomed me in a way I've never been welcomed to a certain degree even by my own family with my partner.